How is it going, everybody? Today, we are having some fun with Kubernetes. We're going to read some logs, and this is an updated video about something that I already did in the past. So uh, it's not very similar uh, to the previous methods that we discussed. So definitely fun times for Kubernetes that developed so much during those years. So uh, very important to discuss what logs are we going to uh, check. Uh, those are the pod logs or the container logs. Those are not application logs, right? So every uh, infrastructure, every cluster development, whatever you uh, refer to in your Kubernetes cluster has different setup. And one of the setups, of course, is where you dump your logs. There are many ways of doing that. Uh, but uh, usually application logs would be stored in a different place uh, to the one where the pod logs, right? So pods, it's everything about how pods operate, what kind of issues and the pod configuration in the containerization are experienced, uh, connectivity between pods and external services. Well, applications would be like what your application is doing and what kind of things are relevant for it there. So now when we settle that, let's continue to the actual uh, log viewing, right? So uh, first method is command line, right? So we go to with cube uh, CTL get pods and the name of the namespace. In my case, I'm using ops bridge or something like that. And we see that one of the uh, one of the pods over here probably has some difficulties it was rebooted several times so what's interesting is that you see that every one of the pods has this little hash symbol at the end of it which means that uh, every time the pod is deleted uh, it would have a completely different symbol here's for example an example of uh, pods that are created every 10 minutes they do something small and then they are done and they have a different symbol. So it means that each of them would have a different log produced, but from command line, you kind of uh, don't care about that. So let's see the logs for, uh, let's say, IDM, right? So it's going to be cube, CTL, get logs, and we specify it and we say the namespace, OpsB. Now, if you notice, I did not say what uh, container I want. Uh, to use. That's because I don't need to memorize them. Okay, I just need to say kubectl logs and it would give me the suggested names and item IDM, for example, this is the second container name. So now I can just repeat the command just by adding minus C and then adding the item IDM. And that's it. This is my log. Okay as it is uh, for now. So now I can scroll up and down, and of course I can dump it into a text file and review it later. So this is the first method, and you get to access every every pod, every container separately, and see what's going on, and you get kind of a status until up to the date. Of course, uh, you can tail it. Uh, I guess there is a way to, to do tail. I have no idea, really. Uh, but uh, we don't care about this method because it is very, very uh, inefficient compared to other methods, right? So the second method is going to be the file system. So when you know where, where your logs are stored, you can access the specific place. So for me, it's going to be in uh, the predetermined folder, or predetermined place, uh, and let me check it. So it's item logging wall. This is where all of the uh, logs are dumped in my application. In every application, there would be a different place, but you would know it. Uh, but you, in order to navigate it, uh, you need to have a few techniques in mind, right? So we'll go into item logging volume, and it's still separated by container, Kubernetes system, and uh, we'll go to container. And probably it's... Uh, just a dump of everything in the same place, right? So when I try to list the directory, what I get is a huge delay, huge delay. So after waiting like 40 seconds or something, then I see all of my logs and you see it's a mess. There are multiple log folders. All of them are folders and some of them are just logs uh, separated from each other. And for every log, there is also a variation for the specific hash that is part of the pod name. So it becomes a mess really, really fast. So here, when you list the directory, you need to use grep. 
And let's see if we can uh, still use the item idea. to see what logs belong to that specific pod. There it lists. And we get all of those nice logs. Now to make it a little better, as you see, it, it's not very sorted. And I want to get access to uh, the current log file, right? So I need to sort it by using ll minus ltr, and then I'll grab uh, the name of item uh, IDM and it would list all of the uh, logs in a historical or in a chronological order, right? So let's do just that, and it's going to be going to look a little bit better at the moment. And the result is well, now we see that we have one from May twentieth and everything else from previous, and we can. Uh, use tail minus f to watch it uh, develop in real time for example like this and then it would just output everything that happens to it as it progresses or we can just uh, you know we can cut it or we can tail minus uh, n 200 to see the last 200 lines of the logs whichever method you prefer in order to look at those logs Right. So this is more or less uh, the file system method. It has a benefit uh, for you, for example, to access the historical logs from previous iterations of the pod. So the pod was deleted and you don't know why, but you want to see the history of what happened there. You can get inside and see it uh, using the file system method. It's super, uh, super convenient uh, in those investigations, and it's convenient to see in real time how your logs are progressing with a tail command directly from it without using the kubectl, which, uh, which allows you to do it, but uh, there are more components, and uh, every time you need to look at a different log, you need to remember a lot of things when you're using the command line uh, for kubectl. Now, the third method is kind of new for me, uh, and it's still developing, but it's super cool. Uh, it's called K9Netis, Kubernetes, K9s. Uh, I don't know what the real reference to it, but it's a very, very nice utility that it just gets installed on top of your uh, master node, and it gets access to whatever you want, and we'll do it live right now so you'll see how easy and and the nice it is so this is a, this is the command and i'll paste it into the description but basically it's a curl command that runs and gets the uh, the thing installed and ready for us and uh, we just let it run it should take ah, that, that, that's it it's done so we go with k9s and as you see i just started from the command line as it is, it's nothing, and now it, it's empty, right? More or less, but actually it's showing everything. It might be empty, so you click on zero, you see that all, all of the help is listed right here at the top, so you never get lost. Now, uh, there's going to be a separate video about k entities, but what uh, we're doing here is logs, right? So, for example, we can change the context of uh, the namespace, and right now the namespace is set to zero, but we can also uh, choose uh, another namespace, for example, uh, namespace uh, ops B. Okay, and let's see what's on the inside. We go to the namespace over here and we see all of those nice pods in the namespace. So we'll find our IDM just by just uh, going up and down with your errors. And we can do several things. One of them, of course, is going inside and viewing the log for all of the uh, internal containers. But we can also access it uh, like in a global manner, right? So I'm clicking the ESC here, going back, and I'm clicking the L key. L shows us logs, and the default is one minute. By pressing the keys, you can switch to old logs, one hour, 30 minutes, whatever time frame you prefer. So usually I click on uh, five to see the latest logs that happened here. And you see, this is everything that happened in the one hour. If I go with zero, 
then it will show all of the logs of the current pod. Now, the disadvantage in this methodology is that you cannot view the historical data in older pods. Uh, at least some didn't find a way to do it here. But then again, there is a lot of interesting things. So for example, you can toggle wrap. It means that all of the lines would be wrapped so you don't need to scroll to the right side. Everything is on your screen. And another thing is timestamp. So uh, you know that not all logs are created equally. Okay, and let me show you the one hour. As you see, uh, in this specific situation, we do have a timestamp attached to every line. But uh, when someone develops an application that doesn't include the timestamp for the log itself, this thing would identify when it was written using a system time attached to every line here. And then you can find out what was the sequence of writing it. So it's super useful. I mean, uh, it's just one key away from uh, getting this functionality. So I very much recommend it. It's super cool. And uh, of course, for those of us that work in my uh, area with all the products, as you see, the application is super complex and it gets complex every single uh, release more and more. And this methodology is actually preferred to, uh, to a level where I'm going to teach it next time I get an opportunity to my students. So I'm going to represent it as the default way of doing things because it's so nice. It allows you not only viewing logs, it allows you to do all kinds of things with your Kubernetes. Basically, it's kind of a visual kubectl attachment. And uh, for logs, it's very useful, but the believe me, for everything else, it's also super useful. So definitely worth giving it in a try. And of course, the command for installing it on your cluster uh, or your, on your master node, I'll put it into the description. So I hope you like this video and I'll see you in the next.